Elephant garlic is a variant of which vegetable? Garlic. Is that your final answer? No, onion. I don't uh, think Key didn't have to do this, did he? Uh, if no. I really guess I have to put four radishes in their mouths for a No combo. one, okay. just you. Hello, I'm Fern Brady, and this is What a Combo, the podcast about mad food combinations. This is the show where me and my guests eat ridiculous food combinations week after week so you don't have to. Think stuff like watermelon and mustard, uh, garlic bread and orange juice, ice cream and crispy chilli sauce. That was one of the worst ones. We've done them all. As well as listening to the show, you can also watch us eat this nonsense over on YouTube. Just head over to Twisted's page and you'll find us there. And if you're watching already, hello! Today's guest, if you mix fresh berries with a crushed meringue and double cream to make a luxurious eating mess, garnish with a whole bulb of crushed straw garlic and melt over a bar of Tony's Chocolate Only, discard any traces of truffle, add some popping candy and chuck in loads of paprika... Bake everything for 25 minutes and play a game of top trumps while you wait. It's comedian Ivo Graham! Hello. What a strange intro. Um, yeah, it was quite strange. I mean, I liked it all, but I... I uh, and I know it's all about crazy combos, but I must stress I've never done that exact uh, thing. I mean, it, it, it sounds great. Well, I'm glad you've come on because uh, I think we've eaten together more than... Most comedians I've worked with. Yes, um, and also you've got um, contempt for me that's and my taste in say. food. <laughs> uh, I I've always eaten in a way that's very different to me. Um, I thought because you're posh that you would eat really nicely, mm. and then I remember being appalled when we were on a bus to. I think we were going on a wine tour in Australia. And uh, I think you were hungover and you were just uh, yep. eating a sausage roll yep. in a very aggressive way yep. and then some sort of cake or a biscuit yep, at breakfast up. time and yep. that's not the right time to eat It's it. funny that because I, I thought which bit of the Graham Brady, uh, uh, not the politician, <laughs> repertoire is going to be drawn on here and I was thinking maybe... You know, when we, when we were doing the Dave Travelogue, British as Folk. One, and one of the said, most, most watched Dave shows of all time. Um, a, a tragic uh, decommission, <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned. History will not look kindly on those who did not give us a second series of British as Folk. But that was travelling around a lot together, eating on the go, often doing slightly strange food challenges. When you said the wine tour in Melbourne, that surprised me because... That's one of my happiest memories. And my memory of that is us laughing on the bus back to Melbourne as we're all sort of like mucking around and sort of switching seats on the bus. But even from that happy day, there's a bit of my food shame that I'd forgotten. Sorry. <laughs> like, I remember it in slow motion. You were putting the sausage roll to your mouth. And me being like, what? <laughs> um, I mean, I've got to say, Fern, obviously, thank you very much for um, sort of almost like promoting my poor eating. Uh, because, you know, all publicity is good publicity. And I wasn't <laughs> expecting when I did um, off menu to become a sort of punchline for uh, sort of hideous disrespect for food. And so when you started talking about it on your episode, uh, it, I was like, oh, yeah, no, this, this, this brand, such as it is, is really being quite heavily reinforced now. Do you think you can contradict me? Do you think you No, not at all. Your voice is in my head. When you, you, oh, no. you, you, you replied to an Instagram story I'd put up of me eating a Quaker Oats flapjack on a train and you <laughs> replied, this is what I'm talking about. Just no respect for food or yourself. <laughs> 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 I think about that so much whenever I'm snacking. Like, no respect for food or yourself is such a big two. Well, some of your friends have described you as the dustbin. Yes. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. And that's like... So you're the perfect person to have on this. Um, almost sort of gratefully. Like I lived with my friend Rose, uh, who, was, who was a caterer for a bit. She made amazing stuff and there were always sort of like leftover canapes from like some wedding preps she'd done. Uh, but I was like, oh, maybe I'll move in and I'll become a foodie. And instead I just became the sort of waste disposal unit for all of her car. And she was like, it's great. I never feel guilty about throwing stuff away because you'll always turn up from a gig at 11 p.m. and just anything that's on the sideboard will be gone. <laughs> So what have you brought in for the snacking combo today? It smells nice. Uh, oh, well, well oh. I mean, here we are. <laughs> what are you looking at? Oh, wow, it hits you when the cloche comes off. I mean, it looks nice. Um, we should describe for anyone listening, uh, this is, I believe, uh, Boursin. It's Boursin. It's your standard... Um, I can't, I can't, for something I've eaten so much of in my life, I can't even tell you what it is. It's like a herby cream cheese. Yes. It's the herb. 
Uh, it's, um, isn't it garlic and chives? It's garlic and chives. Thank you very much, Fern. And there's thin apple slices as well. Uh, yes. Very, very delicately sliced. Very delicately sliced. Green and red. So those tastes are at least catered to. So... Um, I have. I'm. I'm not having as much ball sun in my life as I used to because I. I find it's very difficult to. Um, you know, once the foil is open, it tends to be a bit of a one-stop shop, and it's obviously a huge amount of uh, cheese to take on board, um, in a single go. Um, when did you first eat this? Um, I'm afraid to say, it was something I would have in my own room at boarding school. Yes. Let's get straight to the business. End. Watching neighbours. No neighbours. You'd watch in the common room. Um, with uh, with you know twenty other people, so it, you'd be um, you'd be drawing attention to yourself if you cracked into a full boar sand during neighbours. I, I have to explain here. Um, I've I went to the set of Neighbours with Ivo, yes. and uh, he was vibrating with excitement uh, to the point that I think at one point we had to kind of leave the set because you were so excited. It was distracting the actors. We were meters from Toadfish. From... I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> when you start doing stand-up, do you dare to dream that one day you'll be doing comedy at the Melbourne Comedy Festival and someone will be coming up to you in a late-night bar and saying, by the way, I used to work on Neighbours. Do you want to get in my car tomorrow morning and come for a tour of the set? It was good. It was absolutely phenomenal. Because um, yeah. I used to watch it at boarding school and then what was the thing where you said you would all run out into the mm. corridor and hit We had a big... Because you were excited. Yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> so weird. <laughs> the boarding house um, was like a big sort of spiral staircase. So then there were three common rooms. There was uh, upper sixth on the top floor, lower sixth mm-hmm. common room on the middle floor, and then everyone else's common room on the bottom floor. B block, C block, and the rest. And <laughs> uh, and But everyone's watching Neighbours, you know, whether you're 13 or whether you're 18. That matters a lot to you. Mm-hmm. So whenever there was a big dramatic twist... Uh, romantically, or when neighbours started to pile on stuff like the plane crash, you'd everyone would run out and they would like uh, sort of slam the banisters of the <laughs> of the stairs. So, but if you, you imagine, you know, in um, Ten Things I Hate About You, have you seen that movie? Yeah, many times. So uh, when they chuck out the invitations oh, and to Bogey Sexy Lowenstein, boy Sexy by Boy airplanes. Plays, and it's a lovely shot mm. from below of the invitations just cascading down the stairwell. <laughs> so imagine that, but with boys like leaning over the, <laughs> the stairs, just like going, neighbours. That's how I imagined it. Yeah, which was this too- isn't dissimilar to a cheese board, by the way, so this isn't too bad at all. How much of this, um, oh, you've made a lovely little um, sort of stone henge. Um, <laughs> yeah. All the stories that we just said took place at Eton. Uh, competitive prices if you want to send your little boy there. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to mention that you'd gone to Eton again because I want to stop bringing it up now. It'll be in the blurb. Feels like do, we really na- do we have napkins? Yeah, there's napkins there. Oh, sorry, of course. Quite a weird thing watching someone just polish off an entire borsam on camera. I mean, thanks for having me. Well... So there's there's been worse combinations, and I've been shocked how um, how quickly people move through them. Well, Apple is Holy quite solid. Christ. Sorry, you are firing through that <laughs> as if there's a timer. There's not a countdown timer. Ooh, it's just so good, isn't it? <laughs> it's all right. It's, it's so um, rich. this weird thing is happening where um, in this accent, I'm going to say to you. Uh, I wouldn't actually buy Bursan because I see it as a sort of common cheese. <laughs> and that's, I would rather buy something fancy. Whereas I'm going, I love it. It reminds me of Eden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes me think of the life I uh, left behind. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I've uh, revealed the secrets at the, at the heart. I think I can say we're on the final day of shooting and you're down to your last couple of napkins. <laughs> this is a disaster. What are you doing? I'm, str- I'm afraid I've struggled to uh, release my napkins. So when when would you eat this now? <laughs> Sorry, Fern. I think I just have to make a clean break for it with the entirety of the napkin complex. Yes, fantastic. As, um, right. I mean, I'm afraid that's. I, I hate to describe anything as someone else's problem. Right. Uh, so Ivo's just destroyed the. Well, I haven't destroyed. You know, napkin you know, hold. I, I don't think I've ever um, taken. Just a put lot. it back, and we can move on with it. <laughs> Thing. Does anyone else in your family eat like this? Because I still follow your sister on Instagram. Ivo's sister is a model, a top model. She was, was she, a model. She, she did modelling. She did she's model. Now, she's still very much aligned with the fashion world and her Instagram is still edgy and tasteful. 
If I eat this, can I be a model? That's not for me. To, you know, there are so many factors for. Um, I don't. Okay. I don't think a single, um, you know, sort of uh, heavy day on the ball sun is going to <laughs> sort of rule out <laughs> whole chapters of your future. But I think it can set some dangerously addictive processes in motion. <laughs> I mean, I like even I remember so much the sort of experience. Like this is it's very evocative for me. Trying to sort of like fold it over and make it neat, and being like, oh well, we can sort of reduce it to this little sort of like sort of undignified onion and then like an, <laughs> another day but really it's just so messy you're just like yeah it's easier just to finish it now and then scrape the remaining balls Never the seen. oh I like this so he's just forking it out now <laughs> I want to do that <laughs> oh so next up it's your wild combo but before that we're going to play a quick game of good combo bad combo oh. I'm going to present you with a combination of things. You're going to tell me if they're good or bad by saying good combo or bad combo. Let's go. Yorkshire puddings and gravy. Yeah, one of the great combos. Ivo Graham and Fern Brady. Fantastic. Bread, Maybe cheese. Channel 4. <laughs> they, they all want a bit. Bread, cheese, pickled onion and ham. Um, yeah, fantastic. Flash mobs and cringe. Uh, well, I see what you're getting at there, but I'm going to go into bat for the flash mob again and say no. Not, cr- not cringe. Long nights in winter. Uh, y- yes, that's a, that's just a, a, a that's a, an unavoidable fact. Eaton and prime ministers of the UK. Well, I don't think there should be as much correlation as there is, but I suppose I would have to say at this current point, what a combo. Swindon and roundabouts. Yes, uh, very much the main calling card of the town. Okay, we're gonna do your wild combo in a minute, but first I need to rate what we've just had. I like it a lot, Ivo. It's uh, up there in my top three things this series. I'm going to give it uh, eight bursans out of eight. <laughs> <laughs> this is What A Combo and me and my guest, Ivo Graham, are back. Next up, it's the Wild Combo. This is something Ivo's brought in for me. It's a main course and it's going to be quite unusual. I can't even remotely guess what it is, especially when it comes to this man. Yes, please. We've so this looks like half an aubergine and some satay sauce. Yeah, it's, it's like a sort of miso peanut uh, sauce. This is really unexpected. Yeah, well, we've already talked about the versatility of peanut. Um, you're going to need a fork. Uh, I've just taken the last fork. That's all right. I'll, I'll, you know, I shouldn't have gone so early on my um, oh. forking my borsan. I bet it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, is aubergine... this how you normally eat it? You just spread it on. Well, I... <laughs> it's tricky. like a sandwich. When you don't have a fork, you have to go with the one bit you really can do, which is the spreading. Because... Well, I'd been going to just stop filming and go and get one. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, but I don't want to. You know, the continuity is so delicate. Fern's hugely appreciating these combos that I brought mm, in. That is a chewy aubergine. Very lot of texture. Oh, really? Would you? You'd rather your aubergine was uh, scorched, burnt to a mm, crisp. Mm. It's good though. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. This is good. Nice and salty. So when would you eat this? Aubergines were a big part of my lockdown. Mm. Mm. My brother and his girlfriend. The problem is, it's. let's use the word no one wants to hear used. It's claggy. It's, mm. it's not anecdote central, a, uh, a peanut soaked aubergine. But there we go. My brother and his girlfriend, both vegetarians, mm-hmm. um, lived. we lived together during lockdown and they cooked a lot of fantastic things with aubergines. Mm. But I found that attempts to do them myself since, I can never get the texture right. Um, this is this is nice. This is nice. There's, there's a bit of give. Um, but using a miso or, or soy glaze, I'm such a fan of miso soup. The, ideally, a miso ramen, like Wagamama used to do, or just those little sachets of miso paste that you can just add to boiling water. I'd say I had one of those a day as a teenager. Yummy! So hang on, is this going to be like this crisp audio of us? Like, aren't people going to hate this? Sorry. Um, I think this the audio of this one's going to be hard because of all the claggy mouth noises. <laughs> Have your guests tended to go for crunchier food? Do you know what? You're one of the only people that's not brought in crisps. There's been a lot of crisps. Really? I mean, I love crisps. I, I think I've got um, to be quite high up the list of sort of crisp-eating comedians. I was thinking of getting in touch with Richard Osman to say that he he hasn't done uh, the World Cup of Crisps on Twitter for a long time. (laughs) And um, I know he's very busy with the books, but is he going to do another one? And if not, could I take it over? If um, 
you were able to advertise crisps, what brand would you do? I'd like to represent. I mean, I don't know. It's obviously Doritos is probably the crisps that I've eaten most in my life. Mm. Um, but would I like That's to be associated with, with a sort of newer, sort of cooler crisp? I'll tell you what I don't like is those truffle crisps. What um, What are they, like kettle chips or something? What's the, what's the bag called? I can't remember what they're called. Torres. Torres truffles oh. are confirmed in my ear. Oh, I like them. Yeah, well, you're you're very welcome to advertise them. Because they, they look like the kind of crisps that you buy from a shop that's called a general store yeah. that sells sourdough and it, things. It's aspirational again. Yeah. Can't bear it. Crisps should be an inherently shameful experience. <laughs> That's and that's great. why Doritos come in. That's a lovely sound bite for the trailer. <laughs> I haven't really spoken. Because, because, because I have eaten it all. Disappearing. And I had aubergine for my dinner last night. Did you make that? No, I had um, butter beans a la Norma. You know how you get pasta a la Norma mm. with aubergines and ricotta and stuff? I made it with beans. How nice, Fern. I will. You've you're recently a, become a fan. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter started at school. Um, oh, sorry. I think you said you recently became a father. <laughs> no. <laughs> a fan <laughs> of radishes. <laughs> when you said that your daughter had started at school, my brain started to panic and I was like, what have I missed here? Yeah, yeah, no, that's got nothing to do with me being a fan <laughs> of radishes. <laughs> radishes. <laughs> Listen, so I said this to, uh, we had Tim Key on the show. He loves radishes. I recently tried to get into radishes because I like Miriam Margulies a lot. Oh. Uh, and I saw her saying that radishes are great, but she has crackers. Uh, they're not. I tried. I tried it last Stick week. Them in the middle. We can I put them in the peanut with everything else. I've got you your own bowl because oh, I know that you love games. <gasps> We're gonna play a game. Oh, fun. You love them, don't you? I love someone, um, someone who we both know told me that you uh, stopped everything at the pub once to um, <laughs> get everyone to play board games. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, and it, everyone it was, was in down. the middle of their pints, well, and you insisted on <laughs> board games. I hear you, Joe, and it was a great. Yeah, night. it was George. <laughs> <laughs> so I've devised this quiz to see if you really do love pink edible root vegetables by seeing how many you can fit in your mouth. Oh, now, the right. way this game works is oh. I'm going to ask you a question about Swindon or vegetables. If you get it wrong, you put a radish in your mouth and keep it there. If you get it right, I put a radish in my mouth and keep it there. Whoever has the most radishes in their mouth by the end is the loser. It's as simple as that. Or is it? Because for health and safety reasons, we have to say that you're not allowed to tilt your head back at any point for risk of choking. If you do, you lose the game automatically and maybe even your life. No tilting. Right. My T-shirt has the word tilt written on it about 50 times. Okay. <laughs> because of the Confidence Man album of the same name. But I will not obey its instructions. Right. Are you ready? Yes. You I've, understand the game. Yes, this is clearly going to be the takeaway content from this whole experience. Me Which, getting a question wrong about Swindon with a mouthful of radishes. Which vegetable was the first to be canned? <laughs> As in uh, sort of uh, um, marketed in cans or, or like sort of... Uh, Discontinued. As in marketed As in or discontinued? British folk was canned after one series. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the first can, what are the big can? Of, uh, sweet corn. Uh, you're wrong. It was peas. Oh dear! It's a radish. Oh, peas, of course. Well, there we go. I, I'm not unhappy with my guess. In sweet corn. the mouth. Which James Bond actor once called Swindon a great place after filming there? Roger Moore. Sir Roger Moore. You're wrong. <laughs> Going for the small radish. It looks like you're enjoying the first radish that went in and you've not to lick or chew it in any way. I'm, do I'm doing my best to interact with the radishes as little as possible. Okay. Pentland Javelin. Which which bond was it? Oh, sorry, it was Pierce Brosnan. Oh, sorry, Pierce. Pentland Javelin and Desiree are varieties of which vegetable? Desiree? Is it not the desire? <laughs> do you know what it is? <laughs> There's a comedian called Desiree who doesn't look anything like a potato, but for so, like really doesn't. And for some reason, I just said her name. I just thought you'd spelled it wrong and that there were fucking hell. Right. Do you always say Desiree instead of desire? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I did that. Is it potatoes? Yes. You know that you said potatoes just then. 
You said Desiree Birch looks nothing like a potato. <laughs> You've given it to me, Fern. Okay. Which popular Britpop band named themselves after a leisure centre in Swindon? Oasis. Nice, but bad for me. Mm. Mm. It's quiz? tall. Um, huh? It's tall. How many questions in this quiz? Uh, there's a lot more questions to go and this is already uncomfortable. Mm. Which vegetable's name comes from the Italian for the flowering crest of a cabbage? Well, I mean, I've, I've got absolutely no idea. Italian? Uh, so the flowering crest of fl- a cabbage. Fl- uh, arugula. That, is that your answer? Well, I don't know. It's easier to not answer, isn't it, in this case? Uh, you're wrong. Radicchio. That's wrong again. Uh, Broccoli. Are we allowed to... <laughs> it is broccoli, but we have to take yeah, your yeah, first answer. In the, the mouth. Answer. I noticed you Bro- picked the smallest radish in oh, your yeah, bowl I'm... there and not that yeah, one. Yeah, of course, Fern. Broccoli. Okay. Like, probably the vegetable I eat the most. And my daughter eats the most. <laughs> That's shameful. And On it's related to, the to James next. Bond as well, Barbara Broccoli. We're equal just now. Or you, you've got three. I'm on three. If it's I'm not, it's on not about the radish, it's about the shame. Swindon used to be known as Swine Town after what animal? Uh, pigs? Well, you must have known you were going to be taking a radish for that. Elephant garlic is a variant of which vegetable? Garlic. Is that your final answer? No, onion. No, it's leek. <clears throat> you want to, I mean... Remember not to tilt your head, keep it forward. When you were saying, uh, apparently you're a big fan of radishes, I was excited to tell a, a, you know, a beautiful story about my friends Elsa and Luke preparing this gorgeous birthday lunch for my sister, which kicked off with this stunning bowl of radishes. And then my sister's, the first initial... Sounds like a great party. Yeah, well, it was a family lunch, okay? (laughs) We got loose later on, but we started off with some radishes. Don't take your radishes out midway from I'm the I'm swallowing on my roof. They made a sort of big <laughs> buttery G for her for the first letter of her name, and it was, it was stunning, but never mind that. Let's just keep popping oh, these radishes in my mouth because I don't know what elephant garlic is. You make a big buttery G. <laughs> if you stumbled across this content. That's in like, Ireland, G, G means f***. <laughs> I mean, Key didn't have to do this, did he? Uh, if no. I guess I have to put four radishes in their mouths for a No call. one, okay. just you. Which TV personality affiliated with The Apprentice was born in Swindon? Oh, Nick Hewer. Yes! Right. That's the last question. <laughs> there is actually another four questions, so we can't keep going like this. It's a draw. Hello! Sorry. Mm. I'm just monstering through my radishes. They're so nice. Um, oh, you're eating them. Mm. I don't want to eat them. That's bad. You saw the big bowl of radishes. This is going to be the start of a match dinner. Oh. Mm. I'll try one there. It's quite full on, actually, eating all four radishes in one go. Mmm... They don't taste as bad as yeah, when sure. I was younger. They've started to taste better. Mm. But they still taste like dirt from the ground. I'm making my eye twitch. I've got drool on my arms. But I like that game. I've got to rate your wild combo. Through a mouthful of radishes. Through a mouthful of petrol flavoured radishes. Uh, it was great. I wish there was more of it. That was my only complaint. I wish there was... Another two aubergines. Wow. Hello, this is What A Combo and we're back. It's now time for the Twisted Combo. This is a combination of foods. Ivo has been dreamed up by the Twisted Food Scientists. Uh, they are... Thank are you, we allowed food to? Food scientists. They're not real scientists uh, that will either make us want to celebrate or commiserate with each other. So neither of us know what this one is. Ivo hasn't picked this one. Let's see what's under the cloth. But the milkshakes are quite... Right. Oh, I thought it might be this. So, this is a combo promoted by McDonald's back in 2020 and by Wendy's in the US. I don't have to mention Emily. I should tell you, it's uh, fries and what I think is a strawberry milkshake and whipped cream. That's what it feels like. 
<sighs> I mean, it's not really a co- like you have a standard meal at McDonald's, which where one of the offered drinks is a milkshake, mm. and you're having a chip. So, other than actually dipping them in, which obviously is vile. I it's, don't really know what's uh, different to just having a normal like this isn't this isn't what a combo. No, there's a science behind it because this specific pairing stimulates taste buds that aren't active in the presence of sugar alone. Right. So the salt enhances the sweetness instead of cancelling it out. Mm. It's like now your brain's recognizing it. Yeah, I think I you. yeah, I, I mean one of the reasons I've never made anything for myself in the food world is that I don't know what a good combo is. For me, it's just like, you know, I was, I was saying the, the other day when I was talking about this show, like, it's it's just like when Joey has the trifle with the meat in it. And he, <laughs> can't, he can't understand why it's not good, because, you know, oh, the individual cream, good, parts meat, are, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm getting here. It's fantastic, but is it just chips and a strawberry milkshake? Mm. Um, so this is, a, this is a science project, is it? Us eating these chips and milkshakes together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think if you're on the science section of YouTube and this video has come up, you're going to feel let down by your algorithm. Do you, I mean, you're really going for it. Do you like strawberry milkshakes? Because I, I, I don't I'll eat anything. anything. You, you know, like, this stuff needs to Have be taken Have you noticed how much I'm avoiding the milkshake? I have noticed that. So I think the chips and the cream is good. Chips are much more available than milkshakes. You can't be saying every time you get given a plate of chips, would you mind getting me a milkshake just to bring the flavour out? <laughs> What's the most disgusting combination you've eaten? Has there been anything that you've been ashamed of? Because you're about to go on tour... Yeah, that will bring, um, bring back into some, some more bad habits, I would say. Well, that was what I was going to say. I was going on tour with his new show, Organised Fun. Mm. Uh, I eat quite strangely on tour. I think most comedians do. Mm. Uh, but we just all have different ways of going about it. What do you generally have? I try to be organised by making myself a nice sort of Tupperware thing, mm-hmm. which is so miserable. Same. I, always, I start off the tour doing that. I remember I was um, uh, in a traffic jam on the M1 a few months ago on my way north mm-hmm. to, um, I can't remember where, I'd like to say Southport. And I was, um, it was just complete uh, standstill at about 5 p.m. So while I worried about whether I'd make it to my gig in time, I cracked into my thing and people were just sort of looking and pointing through the windows. I was just sort of eating like with a fork, eating my pasta at the steering wheel. Oh. But I don't really, you know, I do not stand on ceremony firm. It's very difficult for me to have food in the car, even without just eating it all immediately. Um, I've always made um, incredible progress through his milkshake. I've been cheating and just eating the fries. I'm so sorry. I've done this a lot. Can I tell you another thing um, from my time at uh, Popular All Boys Boarding School, Eton College? Um, yes. I was house catering rep. You were the catering rep at Eton? Yeah, yeah. How awful. <laughs> Just for my, As if they weren't already traumatized from having just parents my, just not for wanting to see house. them all year. They've then got you in charge of the food. <laughs> Dishing out slop. It's bad news after bad news, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, I had very little input on what was actually served up, um, apart from when it was our house's house choice for um, the school canteen. Beckington. So I went round with my clipboard uh, during um, sort of the homework period, uh, getting everyone to vote for what they wanted. And uh, what we voted for was chicken nuggets and chips as the main course, and then Angel Delight as the pudding. You know, I used to eat that all the time. Angel Delight's fantastic. Mm. It's my, my, my dad loves it. You'd think that the school canteen is trying to nudge its teenage future leaders uh, into a slightly more aspirational places than chicken nuggets and chips and Angel Delight. But they respected the democracy, and they gave us what we voted for, and uh, and it was hugely popular, and it won House Choice of the Year, and we got a trophy. Our House Master reflected that while it had been a pretty poor year <laughs> for the House on various other silverware front, House Catering Rep Ivo Graham had really come through <laughs> by cutting through the bullshit. <laughs> Can I ask you something about uh, boarding schools? I remember one of my friends saying that they weren't allowed to be seen eating crisps out and about in their school uniform, or they would get in trouble because mm. it's like bad for the school's reputation for the girls to be seen eating crisps. Well, is this a thing at Eton? Mm. If you were in uniform, mm-hmm. you had to, um, you know, you had to do very best not to bring shame on the school, mm-hmm. not eating out and about. Even just talking about it makes me aware of how far I've fallen <laughs> in terms of, <laughs> like, you know, a boy, a, a teenage boy in a tailcoat on best behaviour, fearing 
the very worst, well, not the very worst kind of punishment. Most of that had been outlawed, but getting told off, for, you know, even being seen out and about with a crisp. Uh, and now I'm sort of chatting away in a T-shirt through a mouthful of chips. To someone from Bathgate. To someone from Bathgate for some, you know, very well-intentioned but um, thematically confusing food-based content. I should be shouting at you through a TV, Prime Minister Graham. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so congratulations on the, your direction of travel, but I'm afraid mine has been a, it's been a failure. And on that note about social mobility, we'll end. That's it from me and Ipo. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and best of luck on your tour. Thanks, Fern. Well, break a leg. I like to say break a leg instead. You can find all of today's recipes on Twisted's Instagram page. You can head over there now and discover other combos we've made throughout our time on the show. And join me next week where I'll be eating strange food combinations with comedian and TikTok sensation, Abby Clark. Bye. Bye. <laughs>